All right, Theo. All right, welcome to the Wednesday evening service. One and all, grab a songbook, children and all, teenagers and all, and uh, turn it to page 322, Standing Up for Jesus. Standing up for Jesus. Let's all stand while Brother Brent leads us. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Live high his royal banner, it must not suffer. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for this great opportunity you've given us to come to your house and open up your word. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will be in full control of each and every heart. Lord, that we'll listen intently to the word as it is taught and as it is preached. Lord, I pray that uh, your hand will be upon Brother Hendricksman as he brings whatever you've laid on his heart tonight that it will be a blessing to each and every one. And Lord, I pray that uh, when we leave here, we can be assured in our hearts, each and every one, that uh, you've spoken to us and it will help us to be a better Christian tomorrow than what it was, what we were today. Lord, thank you again for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. I can't, you can. All right. 337, trust and obey. 337. The first, second, and fifth. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but a smile quickly drives in. A doubt or a fear, not a sigh or a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. On the last verse, please. And when we get to that happy, it's okay to smile. You can do that. We'll let you. All right, verse 5. When in fellowship sweet, 
We will sit at his feet, or we'll walk to his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust. Take your prayer guide out, please. Did everyone get a prayer guide? If you didn't, raise your hand and we'll make sure you get one. Okay? That's good. Great job. We're going to go to the coming events first. The coming events is uh, the uh, um, on April the 13th, our national conference in Rockford. Those ladies and men are there now. Uh, they're already in church, I believe. And, or will be at 7, and uh, I think their first meeting was at 4 or 5, so they've already had got a head start on us of listening to God's Word being preached. Um, so pray for that group that is up there, that uh, they'll be mindful of uh, what's being taught, and that uh, it'll enrich their lives, and uh, just encourage, and, and uh, uh, just uh, make sure you pray for those people those hearts that are up there, that they'll come back different, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then on uh, April the 14th, the RC, the RU inside at CRC prison, God is doing a great work at our prison ministries. Uh, we uh, are now in CRC, as, and some of you don't know, but we've been in London now since back in September or October last year, and then around in May, we'll be over into another institution right across the road from London Institution. So God's opening doors, and just pray that uh, God will supply the workers, and, and uh, you ought to be praying about whether that's where God would want you to be in the ministry, in the prison ministry. And it's uh, very enjoyable to go out there and uh, uh, watch these men every week uh, work those challenges. Now, we can't see their heart, but God can. And I'm looking forward to one day when some of them stand behind this pulpit, if God tarries, and they give a testimony of how they've allowed, how God has worked in their heart and helped them to grow in the Word. Amen. Um, the uh, soul-winning bus visitation on Saturday. Uh, come out to that. Uh, I encourage you to be a part of that, brother. Uh, Linky will take all the help that you want to give him on the on the children's bus ministry. Okay, and then the, we got the missions trip to uh, Mexico on the 10th to the 18th of June. And then in July, we have the Vacation Bible School coming up. Be praying for that. And uh, so um, we'll go to uh, the missionaries over on the missionary list. We want to uh, uh, thank Brother Hendrick, Hendricksman for coming tonight, making himself available to uh, give us a, a, a lesson from God's Word. And then you got the unreached people groups that we have that we pray for. There's uh, different groups that we pray for every week. And uh, if you're like me, you can't uh, pronounce uh, even 1% of the tribes that are on there, but of the groups that are on there. But that's okay. As I read God's Word, there's a lot of words I can't pronounce in it. But that's okay too. God knows. And he knows who I'm talking about. And thank God we serve a great God like that. You know, our Sunday school lesson is going to be on uh, Psalm 8 this week. And it pictures how great God is. David is just giving you a picture of how great God really is. And uh, we can't imagine, we can't imagine the God that we serve. But uh, just to be uh, praying about that for those people groups, our salvation list. Uh, those people who are on a salvation list, that's God's heartbeat. He didn't send his son, Jesus, to die for nothing. Right. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for all mankind. And thank God he did, because I was included in that all mankind. And I can't thank him enough for that. Pray for the ones on the cancer list, the military. Uh, pray for those who are in authority. Um, boy, our world 
I mean our world, not just the United States, but our world is in a mess, and, and, a, and a total mess. And the only answer, the only answer is God. But uh, you'll not tell them that. You'll not tell people that because their hearts are dark. But uh, that's another uh, mention. If you go to Psalm 9, it will mention about uh, the people who will be turned into hell. And, and uh, God's wrath will come one day, and they'll not believe it. He, he loves us. He died for us. But his wrath has got to be just as pure as his love was and just as perfect. And it will be. No one will have an excuse. They'll all stand before him. But just pray for those people and that are in leadership, that God will get a hold of their hearts, and they'll make the right decision. The ones on the health list, I do want to make a special mention uh, tonight about uh, uh, Officer T Steve Smith, who died in the line of duty. Pray for his family. Lift his family up to you tonight. You know what a a senseless, needless uh, act that was done there uh, to take a man and put him out into eternity with, a, with a, a gun. And it wasn't the gun's fault. It was the person who shot the gun. And uh, he, he, we need to pray for him also. He needs saved. He needs God. And we also need to pray for him. But lift those two families up. Um, and uh, there was a friend of mine, acquaintance that I worked with for years, Ted Rees, R-E-E-S, that uh, was a truck driver for Sigma for many years that passed away this week. His funeral was today. So pray for that family. And uh, so uh, at this time, I'll have, uh, uh, let's see, where's Brother Don? Brother Chuck. Brother Chuck would come up and pray for our, our, uh, our list, our people on our list. Did you get a list? Brother Chuck, okay. Brother Linderman will pray, and as he comes up and prays for the people, would everyone bow their heads and pray as Brother Linderman is praying? And, uh, um, you know, we want to see God move in this church. We want to see God move in this world. And uh, we, if we call out to God, uh, he will hear and answer our prayers. There's no doubt in my mind. Okay, so Brother Chuck. Let's pray. Father, we come before you tonight and just want to thank you, Lord, that you are a God of love and you do care about every person, Lord. We just want to thank you for meeting all our needs, Lord. Bring us here a pastor, Lord, who uh, loves your word, loves people, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that you continue to keep your hand upon him. Lord, just work in his life, Father, and continue to lift him up, Lord, and help him to meet our spiritual needs, Lord, here as he preaches from your word. And as they're out traveling, uh, Lord, I just pray you watch over that, uh, that bus that's taken them up to uh, Rockford, Father, that you would just keep your hand upon them, keep them safe, Lord. And I just pray, Father, that you work in their hearts as they uh, hear the messages this week and just fill them with your spirit, Lord, the, the men that are uh, preaching there. Father, we have a lot of needs here in our church. Lord, we have a lot of missionaries that we support. And I just pray, Father, tonight that, Lord, that we be able to meet our obligation to these people that we told that we would support and that we would take our offerings, Lord, and use it for, the, for your glory, Lord, so they could stay on the field to reach people that are lost, that you've touched their hearts with, Father, to go to those lands. Uh, I think of Brother Yoder tonight and Brother Moreland. I just pray, Lord, that you use them in, in, a, in a great way, Father, that they can reach those uh, people groups, Lord, as they're translating the word of God into their language. Give them wisdom. Lord, give them understanding of what they need to do and what you want them to do. And I pray for their safety as they travel. Uh, thank you that the Yoders were not seriously hurt in that accident and that you handled everything. Lord, I know there was a reason behind that and only you know.
But I just pray, Father, that uh, you continue to use these men in a great way. I also want to pray tonight, Lord, for uh, these people on the salvation list, Lord, and the people that have uh, loved ones here that, uh, that are lost, Father. I just pray, Lord, you'll touch their hearts and you'll use somebody to come by their path, Lord, even this week, if it's possible, to give them the gospel. And if they've heard the gospel, I just pray you work on their hearts so one day they'll realize that they need you before it's too late for them. These people, Lord, that are on the cancer list tonight, Lord, uh, it's a serious disease and only you, Lord, can heal. And I just pray, Father, that if your will would be done, that the people on this list will be healed. And if not, Lord, that you give them the grace that they need to go through the difficult time in their life. Lord, for our military, we ask, Lord, that you would just keep your hand upon our men and women that serve this country, that keep us free. And I just pray, Father, that you would give the men in the position in our government the wisdom to do what's right. Not only is our country uh, in a mess, Lord, but as Brother Bob said, the whole world is, Lord, but it's always been that way, Father, because of sin. And I just pray, Lord, that these men in leadership, Lord, would get to know, Lord, that one day they're going to stand before you and give an account of what they've done. And I just pray, Lord, before it's too late for them that you would open their eyes to the truth. <coughs> and the men that are in uh, leadership in Ohio, Lord, uh, the governor, uh, the mayor, and the mayor here in Grove City, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to work in their lives and help them to see, Lord, that they need you. Lord, I also pray tonight, um, as the speaker comes tonight, Lord, I just pray that you'll work in his heart and that we will open our hearts, Lord, to your word tonight. We thank you, Father, for the word of God that we have. We thank you, Lord, that it worked in our hearts one day and we saw our lost state and we realized, Lord, that only you could save us. I just pray, Lord, you'll continue to use the people here in this church, Lord, to do your work. That we continue, Lord, to uh, reach out to the lost here, whether it be uh, soul winning on Saturday or the bus route, or the fair, or the turkey dinners, Lord, um, the jail, Lord, that we go and preach to the men there, for the nursing home, Father. We have a lot of outreaches, Lord, but without you, Lord, and the Holy Spirit leading, it will all be in vain. Lord, so we're just asking and begging you, Father, that you would use us in a great way that we would see many souls come to know you in the days ahead. We just want to give you all the praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This time we'd like to recognize our visitors. I see one gentleman back here on the back row. Would you please stand up, sir, and tell us your name and where you're from? Amen. Thank you. Our usher is going to give you a card there. If we'd like to have a record of your visit tonight, please fill it out. Drop it in the offering plate as the offering is given in a little bit. And uh, keep the pen as a gift from us, okay? Let's all stand. Turn to page, uh, let me see, 
294, page 294. Brother Brett will lead us in the song. My faith has found a resting place, not in device nor creed. I trust the ever-living one, his wounds for me shall plead. I need no other argument, I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Turn around, Greek one another. Back up the offering. Brother Cole Abel, if you bless the offering, please. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night that you've given us to be here to work, hear God's word preached. We ask that you'd be with the, the the message that is brought tonight, that uh, you'd uh, be, be able to listen to it clearly, and then we also, we, you would pray that you'd bless the man and fill him with the spirit that brings the word to us tonight, and we ask that you'd be with the offering, that, that we'd give that to back a portion of what you give, bless us with, and we pray that you'd uh, bless it and guide us in spending the money so it'd be spent wisely, and we pray that you'd bless now in Jesus' name, amen. amen. 
At this time, you're going to have a great privilege of listening to Brother Henderson bring God's Word. I'll never forget, years ago, 30, about 31, almost 32 years ago, I came in this church, and the first missionary that I heard preach from this pulpit was Brother Ted Mullins of Papua New Guinea, one of the first. And boy, when he told the stories of uh, Papua New Guinea and some of those stories he told, I sat back there, and I, I'm telling you, the hair stood up on the back of my neck like a cur dog. And I said, I said, I'll give, Lord. I'll give. You send them, <laughs> I'll give. But I've never forgot that. And, and uh, you know, Brother Ted comes to my mind, him and his wife, and I'll pray for him. I'll lift him up to the Lord. But uh, listen to what this man has to say. It's not just he just doesn't come here. To, to open up a book and read it. He's opening up God's Word, and his heart is in it. And just listen and allow the Holy Spirit to work through you as Brother Hendrickson comes and opens up God's Word. All right, am I plugged in? Amen. Um. I want to apologize for not being here for your uh, I Love Mission Sunday, uh, <clears throat> and I was not able to be here uh, due to the hospital stay, and uh, your preacher so graciously <clears throat> called me the, uh, the other week and asked me would I come tonight and fill the pulpit, and I said uh, I'd be honored to do that, um, and so thank you for the opportunity. Now, I was looking at this prayer list. And it is quite extensive. And uh, aren't you glad this is not for God, but it's for you and me? God knows it all. Amen? Amen. And that's why I, I, I'm so thrilled about you having the unreached people groups here. Uh, and, I, and I agree, brother. Uh, the only thing I recognized on here was Black Mountain. have no idea where Black Mountain is. Uh, but God knows, so all you got to do is say, Lord, bless these unreached people groups here. Uh, and he'll do it. And I thank the Lord for that. And uh, now I'm going to, I got a confession to make. And I'm going to tell it to you before you figure it out. Uh, the message I want to bring you in Luke chapter number one. Uh, I preached here seven years ago. And if you were here seven years ago, just let it rewind and listen. Amen? Amen. But what I want to do is uh, I want to preach out of verse 49. Verse 49 says, For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. Luke 149. Now let's pray. Father, would you bless our hearts tonight from your word? And Lord, help us 
to concentrate, Lord, tonight on how good and great you are. And Lord, sometimes we forget about that, and we need to be reminded all the time of the wonderful grace of God. So speak to each of our hearts, and Lord, I don't know who needs this, especially tonight, but when Brother Slayball called me, the minute he asked me if I could fill in, this came to my heart and mind, and I trust at your will now for Jesus' sake. Amen. Now, let me, uh, y'all know what that is? Yeah, that's a prescription, pill bottle with pills in it. This uh, was uh, prescribed to me by my kidney doctor back in November. And uh, I have stage four kidney disease. And uh, so she said, you need to lose some weight. Now, think about this. This says 2.5 mg. That's not very much. Of course, the Bible says it's the little foxes that spoil the vine, you know. So, uh, and by the way, there's nine refills on this. So uh, she said, uh, take one every other day, Monday through Friday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And she said, when you lose five pounds, quit. Now, have you ever done something so stupid in your life that you regret it for years? You ever done that? And so uh, I lost the five pounds, and I thought, wow. This is terrific. I've been wanting to lose weight for years. And here's a wonderful, easy way to do it. Well, I started that in November. And along about the latter part of January and then into February, I began to get weaker and weaker, and weaker, I lost my appetite. I, I could barely walk to the bathroom. And my wife said, you know, you need to go to the doctor. Well, I said, I'll be all right. You guys know what I'm talking about. You, you feel better in the morning, and so you, you say, no, nah, it'll be all right. And uh, so I... Uh, I sat in a chair for 10 days. And finally my son come by because my oldest son came by because my youngest son, I think, called him. I think that's right, Becky. And said, you need to go see Dad and tell him to go to the hospital. So he came and he sat on the couch and I sat in that chair, and he said, Daddy said, you need to go to the hospital. If not for, your, for Becky, for your grandkid. And he began to weep. And that broke my heart. I said, I'll go. So I went and <clears throat> to the emergency, and Becky and my oldest son, Andy, <clears throat> they were uh, right there with me. And uh, I don't know how long I'd, I'd laid there, uh, 30 minutes at least, maybe an hour. And the, the, the doctor came back, and it was a lady doctor, and she said, I know why you feel like blank. And she said, you are severely dehydrated. Your electrolytes, I never heard of an electrolyte, are all messed up. And she said, 
you didn't come in one day too soon. So, God is so good. And uh, he didn't allow me to die. And I spent six days in there. And you know, you know, I learned some things. Um, those nurses do a wonderful job of taking care of people. And uh, I thank God for that. Um, <clears throat> I thank God for my wife's tenacity. She spent five of those six nights uh, curled up or crinkled up on a chair all night. And then on a Sunday night, she went home and uh, our youngest son drove up from Louisville and spent the night. And uh, what I want you to see tonight, if I could, look, look again at verse 49. If you remember the story, the angel appears to Mary and tells her she's going to have a baby by the Holy Ghost. And uh, then in this passage, she goes to her cousin Elizabeth who was also going to have a baby. Now, think about this for a minute. How often does God give you somebody to relate to in your problem? Isn't that good that God does that? And we are not alone. And we, we need to see that. Now, now think about this. Think, you, you know, we, we read it at it, 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 Christmas time, and, and to us it's a wonderful story. And praise God for it, but put yourself in Mary's shoes. A teenager. And she's been made aware that she's going to deliver a child, and she's not even married yet. Can you imagine the gossip that would go around. And the Bible says even that Joseph was minded to put her away privately until God went around and fixed it and told him what was going on, you know. And uh, so we need to understand we don't really understand the goodness of God until we go through some problems. And God brings us out. Now, she says here, For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. So what I want, what I want to do is uh, just <coughs> give us some thoughts on what great things he's done for us. And you know what? We cannot begin to number them. But could I say this, that he created me. And he created you, not some goofy monkey. Or something that the evolutionists would try to make us believe. I mean, I, <clears throat> I, I hate it when I see something... Uh, uh, we were watching a program uh, on TV, and this doctor uh, 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 was, you know, trying to help us be healthy and give us good food and all that. He said, now, uh, <clears throat> this problem originated 85,000 years ago. I'm ready to turn him off. We've only been around here five to 6,000 years, and... Uh, uh, God created us, and he created us in his image. Now, now think about that for a minute in, with these unreached people groups that you pray about. They, they, uh, they worship a God of stone, or they'll roll up mud balls and throw it on a Buddha, and if it sticks, they think they'll get an answer to prayer. And so uh, we need to understand uh, that he 
and he alone created us in his likeness. You ever think about that? You ever think about the fact you look like God? So in reality, it doesn't matter what we look like as long as we look like him. I'll tell you what, that'll, that'll help you out of your depression. Amen? If you need a, if you need a verse of uh, proof text, Deuteronomy 4.32. Now, I don't want to turn to all these passages tonight because of time's sake. The second thing that I see here is not only that he created me, but he saved me. He did for me what I cannot do for myself. Uh, and he saved me, Titus 3.5. Uh, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. What a wonderful, wonderful, and, and there's a lot of wonderful passages about him saving us. But let me ask you this. Where do you think you'd be tonight if you hadn't been saved? Boy, I tell you what, we'd all be on a dump heap somewhere, wouldn't we? But God saved us uh, in his wonderful, wonderful mercy. And... Uh, Praise him for it. Now, here's something that I want to share with you because uh, I think it's important. He called us. He called us. Uh, and I want to take you to um, 1 Timothy. First Timothy chapter 1. That's in the New Testament. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Now, look if you would. Let me get there. In, uh, oh, you know what? I apologize, beloved. I went 2 Timothy. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Look at this now. Who has saved us. Now, we just talked about that. Amen? And, and Paul's talking to Timothy about that, that he saved us. Now, notice this. And called us with an holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace which was given us in Christ Jesus, now read this, before the world began. Wow. And can I, can I say this and say it in kindness? Too many Christians are just hanging on to being saved and not being called. I've heard that all my ministry. Well, I haven't been called. Well, give me your number. I mean, it's right there. You, you, you and I must understand that salvation and a calling are one act of God. Because we are no longer our own. We are bought with a price. And God is our manager, or could I say it this way, he's our owner. And whatever he wants us to do, and wherever he wants us to go, yeah, we sing that in the song, Trust and Obey. But uh, many a time he says, this is where I want you to go, and we say, well, I, you know, I don't know, God. So we need to, we need to understand that. And, and, and you know what we do sometimes? A pastor will be praying about a, 
a, a particular uh, need. And uh, maybe he, God lays on his heart a particular person that can fulfill that need. And he'll go to that person and say, uh, do, would, you, would you take this class of boys or girls, whatever the situation might be, and uh, you say, well, I'll pray about it. You big coward. That's the easiest way to get out of the will of God is to say, I'll pray about it. I mean, you go back to Joshua chapter 1, and uh, when uh, uh, um, uh, Joshua took over, they said, what, whatever you tell us, we'll do it, and wherever you send us, we'll go. That puts a lot of authority in your spiritual leader. And uh, so, we, you know, when I, uh, when I went off to Bible college, we were in a, in, in a hallway about as long as this auditorium. And the pastor was going out that door, and I was going out another door. And I said, Preacher, I said, uh, you think I ought to go to Bible college? He said, no. That shocked me. I said, why? He said, because God don't speak to the deaf. Well, we know God speaks to deaf people, but he was, he was proving a point to me. And uh, so keep in mind, beloved, uh, you can't be saved and not call. You say, well, I don't feel called to the mission field. No, but you're called to something. And sometimes our problem is we don't seek God to find out what we're called for. You know. So, uh, boy, he's done some great things. Amen. Now, <clears throat> the next thing I want to share with you is that he's preserved us. I, my doctor, I, I have three doctors. I have a heart doctor, a kidney doctor, and a, um, what do you call the family guy? You know, he's, yeah. And uh, he's been doctoring me for 30 years. And when I go in to see him, he shakes his head. He's Catholic. And he said, Neil, somebody up there likes you. You should have already been dead. Now, I'm, I, I, I praise God for that. He that is mighty hath done to me great things. And uh, so I'm... I'm still planning on going forward until it's time to go upward, amen, <laughs> you know. Uh, let me give you a couple of three verses uh, that you might read later on your own. Uh, Psalm 32, 7. Psalms 40, 11. And Psalms 41, 2. But he's preserved you, too. I mean, think about that now. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own purpose, but according to his purpose. And it says, before the world began. Now, the truth of the matter is, we've been around here a long, long time before the world began. We were all in the plan of God. Boy, I like that. I mean, God is a God of precision. 
he doeth everything well. Praise his name. Now let me give you this uh, this final thought, if I could, because everybody can again be included in this. He's blessed us. I mean, beyond measure. My kids will come and say, Dad, what do you want for your birthday? Or what do you want for Christmas? Nothing. I've been so blessed. I've got a wife that is Stayed with me for 49 years this year. Is that right, Becky? 49, isn't it? Sixty-seven, seventy-seven, eighty-seven, ninety-seven, two thousand and seven. That's forty, and this is sixteen. Well, where was I? That was the year I went to college. Now, the thing I miss the most is the mind I lost. Anyway, she stayed with me a long time. So I, I'm certainly blessed. I'm blessed with four children. We are. Ten grandchildren. And uh, we love it. You all know Joe. He's been here and he's going to Mexico. Um, now, <clears throat> here's my prayer. Lord, we've got ten grandchildren. You ought to at least take a tithe of the ten grandchildren to the mission field. Now, I, I've got a, my number three granddaughter is uh, 16. And uh, she wants to be a vet tech. Whatever that is. And I've been I've been praying this way. I said, God, would you work in Abigail's heart? She's got her a job where she's serving people. But to go on to college to be a vet tech and serve animals. Just doesn't make sense to me. So we we're all together last week, and we're sit, sitting down, and, and, I, and I said, Abigail, I said, uh, I've been praying for you, and I said, I want to share with you what I've been praying, and I said, I've been praying that you'd quit wanting to be a vet tech. Oh, she said, I have, I have. Well, I praise the Lord for that. I said, and the other thing I'm praying is since you're serving people already in a, in a rest home or whatever, an um, independent living facility or whatever, I said, I'm asking God to take one out of the ten of you grandchildren to be a missionary. So when she said she wasn't going to be a vet tech, I said, what do you want to do? She said, well, I don't know yet. I said, good. I love it. Um, I'm so blessed to have the Word of God. Where would we be without the Bible? We'd be as crazy mixed up as our world is. 
I'm so glad for the church, aren't you? I'll tell you what. How long has your preacher been here? Somebody know that? Ten years? It's sure come a long way in ten years. So I, you know, I've known him twelve years at least, I guess. I'm thankful to have a car. And I, and I, I see other missionaries' videos or slides and I see how the people will walk miles to church. And I don't see that in America. So... We're so blessed. Look, look at what you would at uh, Romans chapter number four. And look at verse number seven, if you would. Is that what I want? That's what it says. So I ought to get there. All right. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Now, now, think about that for a minute. In the Old Testament, the blood of Lambs and bulls and all of that only covered their transgression. But Jesus died and shed his blood and it washes away our sin. Wow. What a blessing. I mean, we have to understand we are blessed of God. Immensely. Every day we wake up, praise God that he's given us another day. In another hour or another minute to enjoy his creation and to breathe his air. Uh, look at Ephesians, chapter number one, and look at verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, You know, it's, it's like our brother said tonight. We cannot fathom all the blessings that our God has bestowed upon us. And, and I, I am sure there are blessings that we're getting that we're not even aware of. And, and we'll be able in eternity to look back, maybe, and say, wow, I never knew that was about to happen. And God protected me. I remember, and I'll close with this, I remember uh, one time I was in Hammond, Indiana. And I was with a family from our church. And the wife said, Brother Hendrickson, are, are you still wanting a milkshake? I said, I sure am. So they pulled over into the left lane to make a left-hand turn. 
and a car flew by us and ran right smack into the car that was in front of us. I think back, I could have been killed. I can think back to when I was in the Navy and on board ship at nighttime, stand and watch out on the main deck. Couldn't have a light on. And couldn't swim. Don't laugh. And I got down on my hands and knees and crawled, and I said, oh, God, help me. One wave could have swiped me overboard. And I'm sure you have some experiences that you can say, God surely has blessed me in a wonderful well, you all knew I was coming, and I'm glad you came anyway. <laughs> and uh, I do have a couple of prayer cards. If somebody doesn't have one of our prayer cards, uh, Worldview Ministries is doing well. And uh, we thank our God for that. So let's pray and be dismissed. Father. Lord, I know these folks really don't need to be told how good you are because I know their pastor tells them that. And Lord, thank you. Lord, help us never to forget that. Dr. Bob Jones Sr. said, when gratitude dies on the altar of a man's heart, he's well nigh gone. Let us never to be, forget to be grateful to what you do and what others do to us by your merciful hand. Bless this church continually in a wonderful way. Bless the conference, Lord, that the preacher and others from the church are in. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, and thanks for having me. Let's all stand with our heads bowed as Lisa plays. If you want to do business with the Lord, what a good sermon on how God, how great God is. Have you ever meditated, have you ever thought upon those things of just how great a God we serve? Have you ever woke up at night in the middle of the night and tears just be streaming down your face? You're just thinking about how great God is to us, even when we don't deserve it. As she plays, I want to give you a few minutes to do business with the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart.
Father, we thank you again for allowing us the privilege of hearing your word taught, Lord, to help us all to uh, take these verses and not just throw them on a table, but to look them up and allow them to speak to our hearts and allow them to work through us and in us. And Father, that uh, show you respect and, and uh, Lord, in our actions, and that uh, may we return some of that love that you had for us, uh, return some of that love that uh, you gave on the cross for us. Help us to return some of that by yielding to you and uh, allowing you to work in and through us. Father, we thank you again for Brother Hendricksman giving him and his wife a safe travel home. Lord, again, thank you for being such a great God. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to close with... Um, Higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. So praying as I'm onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My faith on heaven's table.